Yeah. Anyway, it works. <laughs> true, true. Morning, everyone. I'd like to uh, introduce our first speaker, Rafael Castro, speaking about troubleshooting active queries. Wow, that's, this looks like an interesting talk. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Oh, Justin. So, yeah. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Rafael, as Dave mentioned. Uh, I work for EDB. Uh, there, I'm working with the remote DBA team. Uh, mainly doing support, but I'm also Python developer. I work with several in-house built applications there. And in my free time, I also do some Postgres coding. And that's what brought me here today, right? Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, very troubleshooting. So essentially, I'm going to go over some features that already exist in Postgres to perform those things. Uh, I'll talk about some existing patches that are being discussed in the community are active patches that were not committed yet, uh, but they hopefully will be at some point. Uh, and I also talk about a patch I sent, which is an incremental version of this patch I'm going to talk about uh, that helps a bit more troubleshooting queries that are actually working. So first talking about the motivation. So what brought me here, right? So as I mentioned, I'm part of the RDBA team on, 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 sorry, on, on, DDB, on EDB. Uh, and there we have a slightly different job compared to a DBA that works for a specific company, right? So if you're a DBA of a specific company, you usually write your query from scratch. So you start from a single table, you select the columns you want to be in the query, and then you keep adding new tables there. And hopefully you keep running this, this query incrementally with assisted tools uh, until you identify hotspots, contention points there. Right. Our work is a bit different. So the customer comes to us and he gave us a query and he says that the query is not working. So we need to do something slightly different there in the analysis. So usually our procedure is we first take an ex just a plain explain to see what the query is doing. I'm going to talk about explain, 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 analyze other tools. Uh, and then ultimately we need to run explain, analyze, right? To actually run the query to see what, what's happening under the hood there. The problem is that some of, some of those queries are quite expensive, right? So here, uh, you cannot really read that, but it doesn't really matter. It's just to show you guys that uh, this is a super complex plan. Uh, this query took 6.5 hours to finish, even though it looked very innocent. Uh, it used 36 million buffers uh, and essentially was a, a sequential of uh, a, sec uh, a list of nested loops there. So in this case, it's uh, impractical to use expand analyze, right? Because we don't want to wait 6.5 hours until we can analyze what's going on there. So now talking a little bit about what we have in Postgres currently for query analysis. Essentially starting with explain, right? Everyone knows what it is. Essentially you do explain uh, in a query and it gives you the execution plan that this query is gonna uh, be performing without actually executing the query, right? So I'm gonna show later some details about this. Uh, the second flavor of this is explain analyze. So this is where you actually run the query. So explain analyze, and you can put additional settings there, buffers, uh, timing, etc. cetera. Uh, this will actually execute the query uh, and show you the, the, the real execution compared to the plan that was actually uh, expected by Postgres. And then I need to mention how to explain. How to explain is an extension that allows you to configure Postgres to automatically print those plans, either a plain explain, or you can even go further and configure how to explain to do a log analyze there. 
which will actually execute the, the instrumented version of the plan under the hood. So talking about the, the explain, so as I said, you run explain in a specific query. Uh, it gives you the execution plan with some very useful statistics there. So you have cost estimates. So how much Postgres expect that that specific node will cost? Uh, and very important, uh, row count estimates, right? So how many rows Postgres expect to retrieve with that specific operation? And those two estimates, they are really connected, right? So the amount of rows that are being expected based on the statistics uh, will actually uh, uh, tell Postgres uh, the cost of that specific operation based on the type of operation, right? So here we can we have two examples. Uh, the first one we have an index scan. Uh, Postgres is expecting a very low cost uh, because it's expecting to return to return only a single row. And in the second case, we have a sequential scan because we don't have any index for that specific operation, and it wouldn't use an index in here in this case anyways, right? So it's slightly higher cost because more rows are expected here. When it comes to explain analyze, uh, we go one step further, as I mentioned, right? So you actually execute a query. Uh, you get the whole uh, execution till the end, and then Postgres gives you the actual plan with execution. So as you can see, you also have the cost estimates uh, for each node there. So at the top in the index scan, you can see the estimated cost. Uh, and on the right, you can see the actual in that case, it's not a cost. In that case, it's an execution time in milliseconds uh, and the actual rows being returned. Uh, on the top, again, is the index scan. On the bottom, we have the, the sequential scan. And Postgres gives you more details on this, right? So in this case, it did a sequential scan. So we had to scan the whole table. Uh, you had to filter out specific rows. So Postgres is telling you that how many rows were removed by that specific field, right? This query was, was a bit more expensive, took four seconds there. Talking about some pitfalls of using just explain for an analysis, right? So I'm, I'm talking about those specific cases where the query is taking seven hours, eight hours, or in some cases it never finishes. So we need to rely on plain explain, so it, which is pretty good. It gives you a pretty good idea of where the hotspots and bottlenecks in a query is. But there are some pitfalls here, right? So you need to be careful with those. The first one is bad row count estimates. So as I said, Postgres uh, estimates the costs based on the amount of rows that are being returned. Uh, and this amount of rows can actually be quite wrong depending on specific scenarios. Uh, I listed them here. So one is outdated statistics. So if Postgres is not running analyze fast enough in the involved relations, uh, there can be a situation where the statistics are quite outdated and the estimated rows are quite wrong. Correlated columns. When you are selecting from a table where A equals 1 and B equals 2, for example. So you are filtering two, two columns there. So post, Postgres tends to uh, reduce quite a bit the amount of estimated rows. Uh, especially if those rows, are, uh, th those columns are correlated, right? So in that case, if the columns are correlated, the, the actual amount of rows are usually much higher than the actual estimation done by Postgres. For joints, it's usually problematic as well. So the row estimation on, on, on joints is usually not very precise, and, and Postgres tends to uh, estimate less rows than it actually is. And this can be a problem for bigger plans. Uh, if with bigger plans, for example, you have uh, a join being executed first. Uh, if Postgres uh, estimates less rows for this, it can be that the following operations being performed later on in the query, nested joins, for example, uh, those operations will, will be much more expensive because Postgres was expecting less rows. Uh, the last scenario, so the amount of statistics being collected by Analyze is not good enough. It's not high enough, right? So we have this setting Postgres default statistic target. So even if analyze is being executed uh, often enough in the database, if the amount of data is not enough, which is especially the spe specific case for fast tables, uh, the row count estimation will usually be wrong. So I have one example here about bad row count estimation, right? So in the, in, in the first explain analyze there, uh, you, we can see that Postgres is doing a nested loop. Uh, 
uh, and that query took 2.67 uh, 2.6 seconds, right? And then I did an analyze in, in those two tables and I run the explain analyze again. And we can see that in this case, Postgres is doing a hash join. And the execution time is more than two times faster. Bloat, so bloat is also a problem uh, for uh, uh, execution time of queries, right? So uh, in the first example there, I'm selecting from specific table where columns equals one. We can see that Postgres is doing a sequential scan and that query is taking 1.8 seconds. Uh, then I do a vacuum full in the table and I run the expand analyze again. And the, now the query takes less than one millisecond. So this is a very, uh, exaggerated situation. So I, what I did here, I essentially disabled auto vacuum in this table and I played around with uh, several updates and deletes there to, to make the table huge. But just to show you how bloat can be a problem as well. So going back to the existing features, right? So we have explain and explain analyze. Now I'm going to talk about, uh, as I said, an existing patch uh, in progress uh, being discussed, uh, not committed yet. Uh, and the name of the patch, and you can actually search for this uh, in, in the thread for, for, for hackers, uh, login plan of the running query. So let's talk a little bit about what this is. So the plan here is for us to be able to, to see the plan, just the plan explain, without any additional details, uh, at any time we want for a query that is already running in the database. So let's say that we have a query running. Uh, it's not your query. Someone started this query and it's running for eight hours. Uh, the ideas of this patch is that in another session, you can tell Postgres for that specific session that is running the query to log the explain of that query, the actual plan in Postgres logs. So the goal here is to identify different plans, right? So this is something that happens very often. You have a same query being executed by different uh, applications by different people when those queries are using different plans. And this can be, this can happen because of uh, statistics that change. So maybe a new analyze change the statistics and made the query to, to run faster. Custom settings that the, the, the person can set at the session level or even query parameters, right? So it can be that the same query that is using the same plan is having completely different execution times based on the parameters you are using it. So this can be a problem. The author of this patch is Atsushi Torikoshi. Uh, so here I'm just demonstrating how it works, right? So on the left, uh, I have the session that is going to run the query. So first I get the PID of that uh, session, uh, and then I, I actually run the query, right? So on, on select. And then on the right, I use this new function being introduced, so PG log back and explain plan, and I pass the PID of that query that is running on the left, uh, and Postgres will return me at just true or false if this is not a valid PID. So as you can see in the logs, uh, we have the, the, the text of the query, uh, and, it, and then Postgres shows the, the, the actual execution plan there. So it gives you an idea. And if this uh, setting was, so this, this query, or if this patch decides to add uh, an additional settings, so for example, if you want the, the plan to also show the custom settings for this specific part, which is super useful, it's, it's going to also be printed here. So the first implementation for this patch was in 2022, uh, two years ago. So just to quickly summarize uh, what happens internally here, right? So basically we have a query descriptor. It's a global variable in the code, in Postgres code, that keeps track of the query descriptor of the query that is currently being executed by that specific session. So an external PID, so a second session, sends a, a custom applications uh, signal to that specific uh, PID that is running the query. Uh, that, that, that session that is running the query captures this. Uh, and in a specific and very famous part of the code called check for interrupts, uh, where we can actually implement custom uh, interrupts uh, and custom functionalities on, on what Postgres can do with custom uh, signals being sent. So what happens is that the, the PID that is running the query captures that check for interrupts. Uh, and in that specific case, in the actual uh, check for interrupts, that specific PID will actually log the plan in the logs. Uh, there was a lot of discussion. There is a lot of discussion in progress in this specific thread 
in the email list. Uh, some concerns about this current implementation. So people are, are concerned of the complexity of printing and explain in the check for interrupts section of the code in the database, right? And it actually makes sense. So this part of the code is becoming quite complex. People are adding new features and this is becoming big. Uh, and people are concerned that the explain is not a simple thing, right? There are a lot of things involved under the hood in the code there. So because of this, uh, it was proposed a different version of this patch. So again, we are getting the query descriptor uh, being tracked. Uh, we have the, again, the second session sending the, the signal. Uh, but instead of printing the plan in the check of interrupts, what uh, the, patch, the new version of the patch does is uh, Postgres change the plan state uh, variable uh, inside of the code. So we have a very famous part of the code called exact proc node. Exact proc node is basically a function uh, in Postgres source that is called for every row that is being returned in every node in the execution plan of the query, right? So if you if you think about a plan that is super complex with several nodes and each node returning millions of millions of rows, you can see that this exact proc node will be executed millions of times for each query. So what the new version does is it switches the default exact proc node to use an, uh, a new version of it, which is exact proc node with explain. So, and then in the next execution of this function, which is now gonna be the custom one, it will print the plan in that part. And then it will switch back to start using the exact proc node again. So, so far I was talking about uh, features that allow us to better troubleshoot what's going on with queries. But again, those are queries that are either stopped. So you have a query string and you want to analyze what it's doing with plain explain or with explain analyze where you need to wait for the query to finish, right? So the big question for me is how do we analyze what a query that is currently being executed doing, right? Postgres it currently doesn't offer a lot of features for that. So we have some handy uh, operating system tools that can help us with that. I mentioned three here. So S trace. So basically S trace is responsible for printing system calls of a running PID. We have perf for profiling, right? With perf, you can uh, identify hotspots in, in the execution of a, a specific uh, PID. And we also have GDB, right? The, the debugger, the classic debugger where you can use, you can get a backtrace. And if you actually understand how the underlying uh, Postgres code works, you can actually see what's been happening happening under the hood for that specific execution plan. Here, I'm, I'm just showing an example of a, a handy uh, trick I, I like to do for, for, for some customers. Uh, and this helped me to somehow uh, try to see what the query is doing under the hood and it, with trace, right? So the way this works is first I identify the PID of the Postgres backend that is running the query. I run trace with a specific set of arguments there that will allow me to see what's actually being, what which system calls are being executed under the hood and we, which files. And with those files that I can actually see what are the relations being called in the database. So here it is, right? So first I identify the process. So in this case, uh, 24261. I run trace here. Uh, so the dash Y, is the key parameter we want here. So with the dash Y, this trace will actually show the, the name of the files that are being called, either for both reads and writes syscalls, right? And in the last syscall there, you can see that there is a, uh, a read, p read, and we can actually see which file it is, right? So slash Postgres, slash data, slash base, slash 18638. So that's actually the OID of the database. And the last number there, that big number, it's actually the rel file node of that specific relation. So the number I want is that last one. With that last number, uh, I can go to, to Postgres catalog uh, and see which relation it is, right? In this case, we can see that in that specific moment of this trace, uh, Postgres was actually fetching things for that specific index. And this allowed me to correlate uh, and plain explain of this specific query with which operation is actually being executed, right? So let's say that this index scan is the last part of the operation. So I can say that the rest of the, the query was actually finished. 
this is good, but not perfect, right? I cannot even say in what in which percentage of the execution we are, but it gives us some pretty good idea. So here comes to my version of the the patch for logging the explain of the query, right? So it's logging the plan of the uh, the plan of the running query plus instrumentation. Instrumentation part is about analyze, right? As I mentioned before. Uh, when you run a query with explain analyze, it will add, add additional information there. So the actual rows being returned in the execution time for each node there. So those two things, the, the execution per node and number of rows being returned, that's the actual inter instrumentation part of it. So uh, obviously we need to have a controlled environment for this uh, to be able to track. So we can only track instrumentation if instrumentation is actually enabled. Right, and this happens with explain analyze, or if you are using auto explain with the log analyze uh, flag enabled, you can actually track the instrumentation for a query that, a that is running. My whole my goal here is in addition to see the actual plan of the query, which is super important. Uh, I also want to see what the query is doing up until that point so far. So what was the amount of time spent so far in a specific node, and the amount of rows being returned there. So here I have again the same example there, right? So I get the PID of the backend. I start the query. Now we've explained analyze. Uh, this query is supposed to be running for hours, five, five, six hours. And then on the other on the other session, I, I do the PG log backend explain plan. In this case, in the log, again I have the string of the query, but now I have more details there. We can see that in this case, Postgres decided to use a, a hash uh, left join. Uh, we can see that we have several nodes we've never executed. So that part of the query was not executed at that specific point. So I highlighted the part where it's being executed. So currently Postgres is doing a sequential scan in T2. Uh, we can see how many rows were collected so far on the, on the, on the right there. So 200, uh, 20 million rows so far. Uh, it spent 1.8 seconds in that specific operation so far, and it's currently being execution that sequential scan to do the hash join. So first it will do the hash, and then it will continue. So I, if I keep running this PG log explain plan, I will keep seeing incremental changes being printed in the log to see exactly where we are. So as as I as I mentioned before in that in that uh, output there right so I, I have new version of nodes there an existing one so the never executed I'm guessing you guys are already familiar with this this is already present in the current uh, explain analyze version of this so if you run a query with explain analyze Postgres expects that all the nodes in that execution will be actually executed but this it not always happens right it can be that Postgres predicts that a node will return some rows but it actually doesn't. So the rest, so some other portions of the, the actual execution will never be executed. So that's what the never executor is. In my case, it's for that, but also for cases of nodes that were not executed yet. And I'm adding two new versions of this node, of, of node types, right, in progress. So this is essentially a, a node that has started. So uh, the clock is ticking for that specific node, meaning that Postgres is keep it's, it's continuously in, incrementing the the amount of time being spent for that specific node, but that uh, that's actually not the, the 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 actual node that is being executed, right? The one I'm talking about now is current, right? So that's the actual operation being performed in that specific case. So uh, a quick view of how this was implemented, right? So. Uh, the underlying implementation of how this plan goes to the logs is essentially the same as that existing patch. What I change here is essentially two things, right? So the explain state object, which is a, a structure in Postgres code that actually tells the, the part of the code that is, ex, the, is printing the explain plan. So this object has several attributes there. So, and those attributes actually say to the explain what needs to be printed, right? So if there's instrumentation, uh, if there are buffers to be printed, timing, et cetera. So essentially I'm, I'm, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm adding more stuff there. So we can see them on the bottom there, right? So analyze, buffers, wall, timing, this comes from the actual query descriptor, 
there. So if the query descriptor, if that query was executed with instrumentation, uh, my explain state will use it. Uh, and a very important part of this implementation, uh, so the explain part of the code that actually prints the plan, uh, it actually changes the instrumentation uh, object. So, and this is important, right? Because con considering that I'm going to be printing the plan uh, multiple times, uh, I don't want to be messing with objects that are still being used. So if I did this, I would actually break the database and we would we got a segmentation fault here. So what I do is I clone the instrumentation object, object because that is the only object that is going to be changed. And with that clone object, and then I call the, the, the explain output, which is going to be executed in the clone object, right? So, and considering, considering that this is going to be executed multiple times. So if I, if I run the PG log explain plan multiple times, uh, throughout the execution of the query, uh, we, we, we can see that, um, several clones is going to be performed at the same time there. So it could be a potential risk with memory leak. So for that, I use a new memory context. So in, in the code, right? So whenever I'm printing the plan, I create a new memory context. And at the end of this, this, this print, the memory context is released and that specific memory is released. So now talking about, uh, an experimental patch I, I was playing around and I created this specifically for this presentation, right? So uh, I, I don't intend to send this patch anywhere. So it's just for the purpose of seeing uh, real execution of queries in real time in a more uh, interactive way, right? So instead of printing the, the execution plans in the logs, what I'm, I'm proposing here for the talk is I'm going to print this to a in-memory structure, right? So again, this is initiated with explain analyze, uh, and now to explain dot log analyze there. Uh, again, the same goal as before for that uh, existing patch. I want to identify pres uh, bottlenecks present in a query at that specific point. Uh, for this patch, I proposed two settings to be added. So track explain and track explain interval. The truck explain will basically tell that specific query that that specific session that is running the query if I should be printing this plan to this in memory structure or not. Right. So I, I don't want every query to be ex to be running in the database to be printing. I just want this to be uh, in a specific control environment. Right. So if truck explain is enabled, the query will be printed. And then truck explain intervals, this basically tells the database how often this plan should be printed to the catalog, right? So it's by default 10 milliseconds. So if I start a explain analyze for a specific query where truck explain is enabled, uh, Postgres every 10 milliseconds, it will print the new version of the explain analyze output with updated information. I'm also adding a new view, so PG explain activity. So you can actually correlate this with PG start activity. Uh, PG start activity shows, shows all the queries that are running there. So with PG explain activity, it's the same thing. All the queries that are, all, all the sessions that are running a specific query with truck explain enabled, uh, they will appear in this view. So, and I, I added some handy columns there, right? So the PID of the process who is running the controlled explain. The amount of times uh, the explain was printed. So this is useful to me to see if there is an overhead with the, the amount of explain that are being done. The overall duration of the explain, right? So each of each explain will take time. So I want to see what the overhead is, especially if I'm printing every 10 milliseconds. So the overhead can be quite big, but it actually isn't. So we're going to check this later on. Uh, and the actual plan, right? So obviously the most important part for us to be able to see the plan there. So here is the example. So I get the PID of the query of the backend that is going to run the query. I set track explain to on, and then I actually start the execution with explain analyze buffers there. And then with a second session, I can see what's happening under the hood in the catalog instead of having to resort to the logs. So here I'm, I'm joining PG explain activity and PG start activity, just to give an idea. Uh, I'm actually showing additional columns here from PG start activity. I'm mainly interested in state and wait event, right? A wait event is super useful when you want to identify bottlenecks in a query. So buffer, buffer mapping, data file read, et cetera. So I'm actually including here. 
So you can see on the bottom that this specific query that is doing a hash left join, uh, explain was done 231 times, uh, and the overall overhead is nine milliseconds. So it took nine milliseconds to print this plan uh, 200 times. Uh, implementation, uh, quickly summarizing what I did here, right? As I mentioned before about the exec proc node function in the code, that is the function that is called millions of times in a specific query execution. Uh, we have a, a special version of this exec proc node in the code. That's not created by me, it already exists, which is exec proc node inst, which stands for instrumented, right? So when you are running an instrumented version of explain with explain analyze, uh, we don't want Postgres to be adding overhead to the default exec proc node, right? Because the additional overhead, which is called by instrumentation, uh, we would actually affect queries that are not using instrumentation. So Postgres actually have a special version of exec proc node uh, for instrumentation executions, right? In this case, I'm using this. So I will only be tracking the plan of a running query for instrumented uh, executions. And I highlighted there the, the, the specific part where I added the new functionality, right? So explain proc instrumented actually start the instrumentation node and then it prints uh, the plan to the catalog and on the bottom there it stops the instrumentation and after my explain print catalog we can see that it actually calls the exact proc node real which is the actual vanilla version of this exact proc node which is called by non-instrumented executions so to better visualize uh, the query being executed, I came up with this uh, it's a, a single page application. It's essentially a web application that it's running locally. And it allows us to see in real time what's happening in the query that it's running, right? So, uh, so this is actually interesting, not only for us to identify, to, to look at problematic queries, but it's useful for us to, to learn how actually Postgres runs specific operations, so specific joins. So talking about the hash join, uh, hash join is a classical algorithm. Uh, what Postgres does, not only Postgres, right? Other uh, uh, applications that are running this type of operation. Essentially what it does first is it builds a hash with one, in one side of the join. In this case, it's, it's building a hash for the T2. After the hash is built, Postgres then starts doing the sequential scan on T1. Right? You can see on the bottom there that the, the hash is actually completed. Uh, with the instrumentation, you can see some details there. That specific hash operation took 12 seconds. It's completed. And now Postgres is doing the sequential scan on T1. Uh, it collected uh, 35 million rows so far, and it's returning this host to the actual uh, first node of the, the whole plan, which is the actual hash join. So you can see that in blue, we have uh, the hash left join being performed and Postgres is currently uh, click. And so the clock is ticking for that specific node. That's why it says in progress and it's blue. Uh, but the actual operation that is being performed here is actually the sequential scan on T1, right? So what's happening now is Postgres is selecting row by row on T1. And for each row, it's performing the hash join with the hash table that was already built before. And for each of those rows, it's returning to the final hash left join. Merge join is a completely different type of operation. Uh, essentially, this requires that the two parts of the join are sorted. So this is usually useful when you have an index because index, uh, indexes are already sorted by default. Uh, so if you have an index in those two parts of the of the, the merge join, the index will actually be used. In this case, for this query, I didn't have an index. So as you can see, Postgres is doing a sequential scan uh, on the first table. And you can see all the other nodes were not executed yet, right? So the first part of the query, we have a sequential scan on T1. After the sequential scan is done, Postgres will actually sort this. And what happens under the hood is that the sequential scan and the sorting is being performed at the same time there. So after the sort is finished, 
uh, Postgres goes to the next, next part of the query, uh, the next uh, sequential scan on T2. Uh, and it's interesting that you can see some additional details for the first uh, sequential scan for the first part of the query, right? So Postgres did a sequential scan. You have buffer details there. Uh, we can even see the, the, the sort method, which was external sort because my work mem was not uh, high enough. Uh, it had to use disk. And then now it's proceeding with the sequential scan on T2. After this is done, again, we have the additional details for the, for the scan uh, and the sort in the second operation. And in this case, Postgres performs the actual merge join. So after we have two sorted uh, versions of the, those relations that are going to be merged, Postgres grow, go from one to the other and then performs the join. And it's being returned to the merge join. And in this case, we can see that the merge join is now in progress, right? So, so at this point here, we can see that the merge join was never executed before because Postgres actually needs to perform those both sortings before it actually starts merging. So we can see it starts here, gets a row from here, and then returns. Uh, finally, uh, the nest, nested loop, uh, that's another type of operation. Uh, so super simple, right? So we have two tables, they don't need to be sorted. So Postgres uh, does uh, the scan in one of the tables. It can be an, either an index scan or a sequential scan. So on the first table, T1, we can see that it, it got the first row there. So one row being returned here. For this row, it will actually perform a sequential scan in D2. And for each match, it will return to the actual next nested loop. So here, that's the first part, the, the, the first version of this, this execution. So I have only one row here and one row on the bottom. I left this running for quite some time uh, and it reached this point here, right? So for T1, we got 42 rows. And in this case here on the bottom, we actually executed this loop 20, uh, 42 times. This number of rows here is actually an average of how many rows are being returned in each iteration of the loop. So this is a special operation in Postgres, right? So this is not executed only once. That's why we have these loops details here. And this actual execution time here, which is 4.2 seconds, this is an average of each iteration on this sequential scan for the loop. So it's not a total cost. So we could see that uh, this loop was done 42 times and in each loop, it ran over almost 40 million rows here, right? So this number here does not uh, represent the total execution. So this is actually an average execution per iteration of this loop here. So I'm gonna do what Usually people don't do in, in, in calls because it usually doesn't work. It breaks, uh, but let's see if this, this works. So uh, I'm going to connect to PCQL here. Uh, I have this, so this is the web app application I was talking about, right? So in the, on the top here, I have a list of queries that are being executed in the database. If track explain is enabled, currently there's nothing there. So what I do here is I need to enable the track explain, right? And then I'm going to run a specific join there with explain analyze. So um, it's a simple thing. So joining test two times, so T1 and T2 using C1. Now, if I look at the output, we can see that now we have a query there. And if I click here, I can see in real time what's going on there, right? So those columns from my view I created, I put here on the left. So we can see what's being executed under the hood. So the last value there is the total execution time of the query. We can actually see the explain overhead uh, and how many times this plan was printed there. So quite a lot because the explain the track explain uh, interval is set to 10 milliseconds, right? So every 10 milliseconds, I'm printing the plan. Obviously, obviously this is an overkill. We don't want this, but just to show you that the actual overhead is not that much, right? So the query is being executing for 40 seconds uh, and the ex total explain overhead was 160 milliseconds. And now the query finished. Took roughly uh, 
40 milliseconds there, uh, 40 seconds there. So let's actually run this again so we can actually see what the plan is doing. So as I said, the hash join, first it selects the, the joins for the 32. We can see that the rows are increasing here, right? In actually Postgres, it's not do only doing the select here, uh, the, the sequential scan. It was already doing the hash as well. Now that the hash is, is, is complete, it, it proceeds with this sequential scan here. Yeah, that's that's cool. <laughs> so let's so query that just finished. So let's actually trick Postgres to do different sort of operations here. So what, what I'm gonna do is I want to Postgres not to do a hash join. I want to I want it to do a different operation. So we can actually do this by changing the this specific setting. Uh, enable hash join. equals false. So in this case, I don't want Postgres to do a hash join. I'm, al I'm also gonna, thanks Dave. I'm also gonna uh, adjust some additional settings here. I don't want Postgres to do a parallel execution of this query, just to make things simple, All right? So uh, I also want to disable materialize. So I'm disabling the parallel execution, and now let's start again. So we can see here that Postgres is now doing a merge join. First is selecting the rows for the first table, T1. After this is done, Postgres will sort it, but as I said before, it's already sorting. So first part is done. Now it's doing the second sort. When And when this finishes, Postgres will actually go and perform the actual merge join. So now the merge join is being done. So this is going to return 40 million rows. So we can actually see at the top there home where we are, right? So 20, 30 million. So it should be almost done there. Done. And finally, we want to see a nested loop version of this join. So I'm going to disable merge join. And now it's an asset loop. And this query is going to run for 20 hours because this is not a, an ideal operation. <laughs> so yeah, I'll leave this running. Uh, that's it for, for my presentation. Uh, again. So yeah, so this experimental patch, again, I'm, I don't intend to send this, right? I don't think this will get to Postgres ever because this is an experimental feature. Maybe this could be an extension, right? So one idea I, ha I had was to propose this to be part of how to explain. Uh, but even for that, we are not ready. So Postgres code is not ready for this. I think we would need additional hooks in Postgres source. Uh, I don't think we have... So hackers can correct me. I'm not an expert in, in, in the Postgres code, but I don't think we have a specific hook in the database uh, that is actually being called multiple times while a query is being executed, right? So in order for this to become an extension, I think we, we, we would need a specific hook in this part of the code here. Where is it? Here. Right, so exact proc node, proc node instrumented. So if we had a hook there, I think we could implement this as an extension. Questions? I don't know if I'll 
Um, I had two questions. Uh, the first one is permissions. So this would be executed or by a super user or the same user that is executing the query. Like it, who would be able to visualize the explain plan? Right. Either a super user or the same user that is executing the query. Okay. The second one is, uh, has there been ever any kind of measurement of the performance impact of having the, you know, using this or not using it? Is it like 1%, 10%? Yeah. So the overhead of the actual print of the plan, I actually, I'm, I'm doing here, right? So we can see that the overhead is there for each print. Uh, this does not affect queries that are not using this, as I mentioned before, right? Because the, the, even the, the, the non-experimental version of this patch, uh, it's only being printing the plan when you ask Postgres to do that, right? And that's why that specific patch that is currently being discussed had multiple implementations there. So the first proposal by, uh, by the guy, uh, was actually rejected, right? So it worked, didn't have any bugs. But people were concerned about the performance issues of the check for interrupts there. So that's why a new version of this patch was proposed. Now I think we are in a stable situation. And if you think about this, uh, the version of the patch that I sent, the incremental version, or the, the patch that was sent before and is currently being discussed, this is actually the same feature of that PG log uh, backend memory context that was introduced, I think, in Postgres 15, if I don't recall, if I'm not mistaken. So with that, you tell Postgres a specific backend to print the, the memory context for a specific, a specific query, even if that query is running something. It's actually the same underlying implementation and it got accepted, right? So I think this actually has some potential there. Further questions? Okay. Just a quick one. Uh, this only works if the top query is run with explain. Yes. Or if auto explain is enabled and auto explain is configured to, to, to log analyze as well. Right. Okay. No Thank more you. Questions. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Raphael.